Uh, so this video is a brief introduction to kinematics. Um, so what is mechanics in general? It is the science that studies the motion of objects and it can be divided into kinematics, um, which describes how objects move in terms of space and time, um, dynamics, which describes uh, the cause behind the object's motion, so why the object is moving, and statics, which deals with the conditions under which an object that is subject to various forces is in equilibrium. Uh, so in physics, there are three types of motion, translational, like for example, a block sliding on a surface, rotational, um, like the motion of the moon around the earth or a merry-go-round, and vibrational, like the motion of a mass spring system when stretched and released. And in many cases in mechanics, the object can be treated as a particle, which is a point mass of no size. And this is possible if the object moves in such a way that all of its parts move in exactly the same way. Um, so, uh, for example, there is no like uh, rotation about a certain axis and any internal motion in the object can be neglected. Uh, so the first concept we're going to discuss is displacement. So let's consider a car treated as a particle moving along a straight line along the x-axis. So the displacement of the car is a vector quantity defined as the change in the car's position relative to a certain point, which is here the origin O, okay, during a certain time interval. Um, so the displacement uh, here is equal to x final minus x initial. And so displacement is a quantity that depends only on the initial and final positions of the object. Um, and uh, in one dimension, the direction of the displacement is specified by a plus or minus sign. Um, so if the car is moving along the positive direction, then x final is greater than x initial and the displacement is positive. And if it's moving in the negative x direction, uh, then the displacement is negative. So as you can see, displacement is the shortest uh, distance between these two points. So it is the straight line connecting these two points, okay? So let's suppose uh, the car takes uh, another path from P to Q. Instead of this uh, straight line path, it takes this long path. So in that case, the displacement of the car is still the same. It is still equal to X final minus X initial because as we said, uh, displacement depends only uh, on the initial and final positions of the object and it does not depend on the path taken so no matter which path the car takes between P and Q the displacement is still the same okay uh, and the total distance traveled in this case is equal to the length of this path uh, so we will now discuss average speed uh, so average speed is equal to the total distance traveled over total time and the SI units is meter per second um, so usually there's a, a mix-up between speed and average speed. Um, and as we shall see in the following slide, both are scalar quantities, uh, but speed is just the magnitude of the velocity. So it is defined in terms of the displacement over time rather than uh, total distance over time, uh, like average speed. So let's suppose we want to calculate the average speed of this car. Uh, so in this case, uh, we divide the total uh, length of this path, the total distance traveled, over the total time uh, that, that is taken between P and Q. Uh, so we will now discuss velocity. So uh, first, the average velocity is a vector quantity equal to the displacement over time, okay? So it is defined in terms of displacement rather than uh, the total distance traveled. Um, and uh, in one direction, V average is positive if the motion is in the positive X direction because the displacement would, would be positive. And V average is negative if the motion is in the negative X direction. Uh, so on the position time graph, uh, v average uh, is the slope of the straight line connecting P and Q, okay? So the average uh, velocity uh, helps to describe the overall motion of the particle in a certain time interval. But uh, if we want to describe the motion in more detail, uh, we need to consider the instantaneous velocity, okay? Uh, and uh, it corresponds to the velocity of the particle at a particular instant of time. So it involves allowing delta t uh, to approach zero. 
so the instantaneous uh, velocity is the derivative of x with respect to time. And geometrically, uh, the instantaneous velocity at a particular instant uh, is the slope or the tangent of the position time graph at that point or instant, okay? So the slope of this line here is the instantaneous velocity at this point, and the slope of this line is the instantaneous velocity here. So if you want to find uh, the slope, you just, uh, uh, you can extend this uh, triangle and find the slope, okay? And the SI units is, uh, of velocity is meter per second. Uh, and speed is the magnitude of the velocity, so it is equal to the magnitude of this quantity of displacement over time. So as we said, the speed and average speed are different because speed is defined in terms of displacement, so it does not depend on the path taken between two points. But average speed is defined in terms of the total distance traveled over time, so it depends on the path taken between the two points. Uh, so we will now discuss acceleration. So if the particle's velocity changes with time, it is said to be accelerating. And the average acceleration of the particle is defined as the ratio of the change in the particle's velocity uh, over the time interval delta t. And the SI units is meter per second square. Uh, and the instantaneous acceleration is defined uh, when uh, delta t approaches zero, so it is the derivative of v with respect to time. Uh, and just as the case for the position time graph, uh, the average acceleration is the slope of the line joining the points p and q on the velocity time graph, okay? And the instantaneous acceleration at a certain uh, instant of time is the slope uh, of the curve at that uh, particular point, okay? Uh, and the figure here uh, shows uh, a certain kind of motion, um, so the position time graph of that motion and the corresponding velocity and acceleration graphs. Uh, so for this interval here, the velocity is increasing at a constant rate, so constant acceleration. Uh, then for this interval here, the velocity is constant and the acceleration is zero. And then for this interval, the velocity is decreasing and the acceleration is negative. Um, and this curve is the derivative of this curve, and this curve is the derivative with respect to time uh, to this curve. Uh, and so this one is the integration of V curve, and this uh, uh, curve is the integration of the acceleration. Uh, so one special case of motion is one-dimensional motion with constant acceleration, and it is an acceleration that has a constant value that does not change with time. So for example, if the acceleration is 4 meter per second square, um, it means that the velocity will increase at a constant rate uh, of 4 meter per second each second. Um, so if the object starts with a velocity 0, uh, then uh, in the first second it will be 4 meter per second. Then at t is equal to 2, it's 8 meter per second. And at, equ uh, at t is equal to 3, it's 12 meter per second. Uh, and so because the acceleration is constant with time, uh, the velocity changes linearly with time, and the average velocity can be expressed as v0 plus v over 2, and the average acceleration is also equal to the instantaneous acceleration here, and is equal to v minus v0 over t, and uh, this gives the first equation of kinematics for one-dimensional motion with constant acceleration. Um, and the average velocity is equal uh, to delta x over delta t, and we equate this to this expression, and we get the second equation. Um, and if we substitute for v here from this equation, we get the third uh, equation of kinematics. And then if we substitute for t, also using this equation here, we get the fourth equation. And these uh, four equations are the equations we uh, one would use uh, for a constant uh, acceleration motion in one dimension. Uh, and if the acceleration is zero and the velocity is constant, then we have only this equation, which is that the velocity is equal to displacement over time. Uh, so we will now consider some examples. So for the first example, let's suppose that an object moves with a constant speed uh, once around a circular path, okay? Then uh, we want to find the displacement of the object and the total distance traveled. 
So because the initial and final positions of the object uh, are the same, then the displacement is zero. Uh, and the total distance traveled is, uh, is equal to the circumference of this uh, circle. Uh, so for the second example, let's suppose an object moves uh, along this path here uh, and we want to find the total distance traveled, so it is 4 plus 3 plus 2 uh, meters, which is equal to 9 meters, okay? Uh, and the displacement uh, is the shortest distance between the initial and final positions and it is equal to, uh, we take this triangle here and it's equal to square root of 4 plus 2 a square plus 3 square, which is equal to uh, 6.7 meters. Uh, so for the third example, uh, let's consider the object here moving in the circular uh, path and suppose uh, the length of this path is 500 meters and the object completes one round in 78 seconds, okay? So we want to find the average speed uh, and the average velocity of this object. So the average speed is equal to the total distance traveled over total time, which is 500 over 78, which is equal to 6.4 meter per second. And the average velocity is zero because the displacement of this object is zero. Uh, so now let's consider this example. So suppose that a car is initially traveling at uh, a velocity of 10 meter per second uh, in a straight line, and then it accelerates uniformly for four seconds at the constant rate of two meter per second square. Uh, and we want to calculate how far the car has traveled during that time. Uh, so because this is a one-dimensional motion with constant acceleration, we can use one of the four equations we have seen in the previous slide. And the suitable equation here um, is th uh, the third equation, okay? So we can calculate the displacement by substituting for V0, uh, T and A, and it is equal to 56 meters. Uh, so let's consider now two more examples in which the information is given graphically instead of through equations, okay? Uh, so this is the position time graph, uh, and it shows that the object was initially at x equals 0, um, at t is equal to 0, and then after 2 seconds, uh, its position changed to x equal 10 meters, and then it reversed its, uh, its direction and headed back towards the starting point, uh, okay? And then it reached, uh, so it reached um, x equals 0 at t is equal to 3 seconds. And then it continued its motion along the negative x direction. And it reached x equal minus 5 meters at uh, t is equal to 3.5 seconds, where it remained there at that position of uh, minus 5 meters for the remaining time until t is equal to 6 uh, seconds. Uh, and this uh, here, it shows uh, this motion along the x-axis. So in the beginning, uh, it was at x equals 0. Then after 2 seconds, it moved to uh, in the positive direction to uh, 10 meters. And then it reversed its uh, direction uh, back to x equals 0 at uh, 3 seconds. And then... Uh, to x equal minus 5 meters at 3.5 seconds where it stayed there for the remaining time. Uh, so for this motion, uh, we can also find the object's average velocity during a certain time interval. Uh, so from t is equal to 0 to 2 seconds, uh, the average velocity is equal to the displacement over time. So it's equal uh, to 10 over 2, uh, which is 5 meter per second. Then uh, for this um, uh, time interval from 2 to 3.5, the average velocity is equal to minus 5, this is the, mi uh, the final position, minus 10 over 3.5 minus 2, which gives um, minus uh, 10 meter per second, okay? Uh, and the negative sign of the average velocity here shows that the object is moving in the negative x direction. Uh, and for this time interval from t is equal to 3.5 to 6 seconds, the average velocity is zero because the displacement is zero. Uh, and for the entire trip, so from t is equal to zero to 6 seconds, the average velocity is equal to displacement over time is equal to minus 0.83 meter per second. And it is equal to the slope of an imaginary line 
uh, from the origin to this point, okay? Uh, so let's now um, calculate the average speed for the entire journey, which is uh, equal to the total distance traveled over total time, okay? So the average speed is equal to 25 meters because here we have 10 meters, then we have 15. Uh, so this is the total distance traveled over the uh, total time, and this gives the average speed is equal to 4.2 meters per second. Uh, so let's consider another example of velocity versus time graph. So initially the object was at rest at t is equal to zero and then uh, the velocity increased steadily to 10 meter per second uh, during the first two seconds and then it began to decrease to, uh, to zero and then to minus five meter per second, okay? And then uh, the velocity remained constant for the remaining time. Uh, so the average acceleration during uh, this first two seconds is equal to 5 meter per second square and uh, from uh, t is equal to uh, 2 to 3.5 the average acceleration is minus 10 meter per second square. Uh, so from t is equal to 2 to 3 uh, the velocity is positive, uh, but the acceleration is negative, and this means that the object is decelerating, okay? So the object's uh, speed is decreasing. Then uh, from t is equal to 3 to 3.5, both the velocity and the acceleration are negative, and this means that the object is accelerating in the negative x direction, okay? Uh, and then uh, from 3.5 to 6, the slope is 0, and the acceleration is 0. And we may also find uh, the displacement of the object during a certain time interval, which is equal to the area under the curve uh, of the V uh, versus T graph, okay? Uh, so for this uh, time interval from four to six seconds, uh, delta X is equal to V, which is constant, times delta T, and V is equal to minus five uh, meter per second, and delta T is two, so the displacement is minus 10 meters, okay? Uh, and then from uh, 0 to 3 seconds, the displacement is equal to the area of this triangle, which is half times 3 uh, times 10 meter per second, and this gives 15 meters. Uh, so in the second video of kinematics, I will introduce uh, the free fall motion and the projectile motion. So thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.